next stop, the museum. Ironically, the museum is right over there and you have to pass the police department to get there. <laughs> The iconic intro, walking to the fishing hole at Myers Lake. I vlogged that early on in my vlogging days in Los Angeles. Look at that awesome, awesome statue of Andy and Opie. Fantastic. We're not going to the playhouse today, but the museum is right next to it. Hang a right. Right out in front of the museum, they have the <laughs> sidecar. There's Andy with the statues. And if you remember in the show, they were always talking about Mount Pilot. It's really actually called Pilot Mountain here. So the admission ticket is this. Take a look at that rocking chair. Remember earlier I told you that Andy's father was a furniture builder? He made this for Andy's mother. And they're showing that inside, underneath it, he actually signed it for her. It says CG 1927, that's Carl Griffith. And here at the Snappy Lunch exhibit, they have Andy Griffith's childhood slingshot. His father made him. They said that the Andy Griffith show was basically, you know, his relationship with his real father. So that kind of makes you think of the bird episode when Opie kills the mama bird. And there's Andy's Boy Scout Handbook for Boys from 1938. And it has his inscription of his name inside of it. There's his yearbook and they have a picture of him because he was the president of the Glee Club, Andrew Griffith. Up there you can see one of his report cards. And then this part of the exhibit's about his time at the Lost Colony on uh, Roanoke. That's where he ended up being buried. He spent a lot of time after college studying and doing theater there. That's him down there in the mustache. And then this is what I was telling you about him making the record. What it was was football. Where he did like the backwoods southerner calling a football game. Deacon Andy Griffiths, what it was titled. And of course, no time for sergeants. Like I said, it was him doing the play of that that eventually got him the role in the movie, which got him asked to be on the Danny Thomas show. There's Andy Griffith's script for No Time for Sergeants, and that's when he met Don Knotts during rehearsals for this. And then here they have a recreation of the Earl Theater, which is here in town. If you've never seen a face in the crowd, watch it. It's very different for Andy. He basically plays just a master manipulator, kind of an evil character. This poster is signed by most of the cast, you can see, including him. Take a look at this. They have one of his actual costume shirts right in front of the courthouse, and that was a nudie shirt. He had Nudie Cone make his shirts, the famous Western wear. Suit maker. Very cool. Very cool to see. And then on the back side of the Andy Griffith Sheriff shirt, they have one of the actual sheriff badges that he wore on the show. Oh, cool. Now this is really cool. They did the recreation of a courthouse here. And those are the actual signs from the show. The sheriff sign, you can see they covered them in glass. There's the actual sheriff door sign and the justice of the peace. And we saw that really cool replica courthouse here in town. 
Now let's take a look at all of these costumes. That is Andy Griffith's custom Martin guitar, acoustic guitar. And if you look on the, looks like the uh, 17th or 19th fret, it's got his name on it. And then take a look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Don Knotts suit. That salt and pepper suit. We'd always see him wear on date night. Thelma Lou. Actually, he's not wearing the jacket there, but he's wearing the pants up there in that photo. And that same hat. And they have Barney's motorcycle gloves. As well as one of the scripts from filming. The Barney in the choir episode was a great one. And then here's another one of Barney's suits. A little bit darker, but the same salt and pepper style as the one right next to it. And then that is Margaret Ann Peterson's episode script from Divorce Mountain style. And then that says that was Don Knotts overcoat. And right here we have Goober's suit from the show, the Goober pile. And when Andy decided he didn't want to do the show any longer, instead of taking Mayberry off the air completely, because the producers actually went to him and said, Andy, you can't get rid of that town. Too many people rely upon it. Like, they need it. And Andy's like, what, you want there to be a Mayberry without me? And he goes, yeah. So they brought Ken Berry in to take over. So there are the Mayberry RFD scripts from Ken Berry, as well as his director's chair. Then over here we have another one of Goober's outfits with the hat. Look at that. Judy, Judy, Judy. And then look at this Andy Griffith sweater right there. Crazy as that. Then they have some of Goober's shoes down here as well. As well as his bronze cap. <laughs> that famous cap he would always wear. George Lindsay's hat. And then that guitar is signed by the cast of the Andy Griffith Show. And the Danny Thomas Show that says both. Check out this case. This one has one of the original soundstage Andy Griffith Show signs from the uh, sound stages either at Red or, and now it's called Red Studios, or at the, uh, the old Desilu lot. And then there's Andy Griffith's script from Return to Mayberry. And here they have some of the props from Emmett's Fix-It Shop. The wall clock here. And then you got the iron and the toaster. Then over to the left you can see some replica barbershop items that they would have used. And then they have some Andy Griffith <laughs> hot sausage and navy beans and all that stuff when he was merchandised. for Sheriff. Gotta love it. And then there's one of the original Mayberry RFD signs. And look at what's behind us. Take a look at this. They actually have a set here. Andy's desk. From the show. Look at that. How cool is that? He even signed the thing that you bang the gavel on. Look at that. How cool. And then that chair over there, Barney's chair, that's the actual Barney chair, the real one. I love it. That's one of the highlights of this trip is getting to see this stuff. I just have to touch it once. So cool. And the phone! Over here they have the real actual cell door keys from the jail. And then inside the jail display they've got Otis's suit and hats. <laughs> 
That's really cool. Look how stained up they are and everything, how filthy they are. The lovable wino drunk Otis. Take a look at this case. That's all Matlock. He originally, when he left the Andy Griffith show, he wanted to make movies and they signed him to like a 10 movie deal. But the first movie was pretty much a bomb and they canceled the contract. Eventually, he went on to star in Matlock, of course, Ben Matlock. That is a letter about the Matlock suit that he's donating here. Saying the suits at the time cost $2,000 a piece. That's one of the murder weapons from one of the episodes. His wristwatch. It's a Matlock watch given to the cast. Then the Weird Wally doll made for uh, the Matlock episodes and then his director's chair and a windbreaker and hat. Filmed in Wilmington. So he said every year the wardrobe women would go out and buy a bunch of the material, make six to eight suits a year and uh, they would be gray. And then he said once they we're starting to get white. By the end of the series, they would quit using them. I think I gotta get a shirt, check these out. I had to buy an Otis shirt to support my t-shirt addiction and some postcards. As you can see, my friends, there is a lot more to see here, but we won't be doing it today. I think we've seen quite a lot for the day and I want to come back and visit again, add a little bit more to the experience. There's a lot more shops to check out, more art all over town, more museums, a squad car tour, and a certain Andy Griffith's house we need to stay in. Thank you all for watching. We're going to call it a day. Have a great night and goodbye.